I didn't gather you here all tonight to spoil the biggest movie of the year for you. I really don't want to do that, but I do have an opportunity right now since I have this microphone and like, you know, some of you probably haven't seen it yet, right? Right? No? Anybody who's seen the biggest movie of the year? I don't want to name it because, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, none of you have seen it yet because it comes out on Christmas. It's not out yet. Out with the Chipmunks 4. Road Chips. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of worried. I'm kind of worried, honestly. I don't think it's going to be as good as the original trilogy. You know, like, Chip Direct job dropped in uh, 2011. It was some game-changing shit, dude. Like, I don't really know. I don't know if they're going to be able to, to pull that one out and really have it be a win. But I got faith, you know. I got faith. I think it'll be good. I don't know. I got some movie ideas myself, but... You know, I keep writing, I keep sending them out, and Hollywood's just not biting for some reason. You can't account for taste or complete lack of it, I suppose, but yeah, I got my ideas. I'm thinking about kind of a, a fantasy slash documentary. You know, th those usually go over well, right? Those are genres that mix together pretty well. Yeah, sit down, relax. It's good. It's good times here. It's good times here. I got this... I got this thing, it's kind of a documentary film. It's kind of a time thing, because Donald Trump isn't dead yet. Yeah. <laughs> Keyword, yet. And I'm not, you know, I mean obviously he's gonna die of natural causes, I don't wanna incriminate myself or anything. But, I mean, I'm just saying like, what, what would be nice is if after he dies, which is hopefully very soon, I would assume if he dies before the election, since he is top dog over at the big elephant right now, you know, and that's, damn, motherfuckers are really reaching nowadays, dude, for, like, candidates, because, like, you know, Mitt Romney was almost president, I thought, like, the next Republican candidate was just going to be a fucking carve-out of, like, just a carving of Jesus and two translators, <laughs> like, what'd he say? What do we do next? <laughs> Jesus, speak to me. Come on. I mean... Once you get to the magic underwear realm, everything is fucking, everything's game. Everything's just a drop in the bucket after that. So, fuck it. But I mean, you know, they, the Trump is looking like the front runner, which is, you know, ooh, 2015. Ooh, <laughs> it's, shit's, shit's getting real. <laughs> shit's getting real bad. But you know, if he dies, that'd be great because all of his compadres, his fucking homies that want him to run, they'll just Weekend at Bernie's that shit. So I want to make a Weekend at Trump's movie. Weekend at Trump's where he just dies and the rest of the fucking GOP candidates just hoist his fucking corpse up. Take him on his rallies and shit and they can just fucking press a button and spit some like anti-Muslim rhetoric, some fucking Hitler-esque shit. It's like, 
You know, it's cool. You don't have to ask anybody if they're racist anymore, because like if they're fucking supporting Donald Trump, then you're just like, you're just like, I'm good. You know, it's like, oh, they, 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 Donald Trump, he's got some, he's got some crazy ideas, but for some reason, he really speaks to me. Oh, is this the uh, Hitler matching shit that he said? Like, holy shit! Like, damn, dude! Like, fucking, that's that's pretty bad. That's pretty rough, rough fucking times. But, you know, I don't, I don't think any of us will be bummed out when old Trump finally kicks the fucking bucket, which we're all, we're all counting on that soon. But I mean, we're all gonna die. I'm trying to be cheery. It's like festive, it's Christmas. So I just wanna remind everybody that your death clock right now is ticking. <laughs> it might be me, but like one of us in here, we're gonna be dead soon. I don't know, I don't know which one of us it is. It could be all of us, who knows? Like you never, you never, you really, you just never know, and I don't think that's like, you know, I don't want to say that like death is funny, because it's like never funny when somebody dies, but everything, you know, death is kind of funny to an extent. It's kind of funny that you like spend your whole life doing everything that you're doing, and then just like one day it's just like, ah! <laughs> you're done. <laughs> oh, but I had so many more things. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not today, buddy. But me, like, I'm, I'm fucking good to go. Because you, you got me, and you got, like, Olympic gold track medalists, you know, like, winning all those Olympic medals and shit. Like, I'm sitting at home, watching Netflix, eating junk food, smoking weed. I'm, I'm not going to get hit by any kind of motor vehicle. But you know, <laughs> this guy is outside training all day. Like, his chances of getting fucking struck down are way more than mine. So take that natural selection because at the end of the day, me being sedentary is kind of, you know, it's not, it's not a bad thing. Like, I, I have a good run. I have a pretty, pretty good run. I have, um, you know, an interesting diet. Uh, I decided to go vegetarian, and while deciding to go vegetarian, I decided to be the shittiest vegetarian that I could possibly be. Just... <laughs> It's like, oh, I can still eat cheese, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that's the ticket. That's the one. So, I mean, pretty much like, you know, I mean, I've literally like eaten for breakfast just like a tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And, like, fucking just sitting there. And that's the kind of shit I'll eat in front of people that I'm like close to and intimate to. So just imagine the shit that I eat by myself, like the harrowing fucking ordeals that are me eating by myself. Like, just take that pint, sandwich it between two, like, large quesadillas, just kind of wrap it in a fucking a piece of pizza. It's just, like, pretty much eating the physical manifestation of shame. Just, like, sitting there and just like, ah, oh, yeah, well, I won't feel anything after I eat this. And it'll be fucking... Fantastic. I would definitely eat anything if there was like a minion on it. You guys know about minions? Anybody ever heard about minions in here? Huh? 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 You ever go outside? Huh? You ever walk into a store? Huh? Yeah, you've seen seen them before. A lot of people are uh, are fed up, you know, fed up. They think that uh, there's too many too many minions, man. Oversaturation. I don't know, dude. I, I don't think it's enough. I don't think. I think it's, I think we need to ratchet that shit up a little bit. Like, this is America, man. Like, if we're gonna, like, really do something, like, you're like, do it, just do it! Like, fucking America, like, yeah! We're gonna do the fuck out of this shit! Um, yeah, I just, uh, I just don't think there's enough, you know, there could be, like, you know, minions pregnancy tests, and there could be, like, you know, you got, like, the one that's, like, goofy and smiling, and, like, the one that's got, like, the the fucking like sideways face and like, you know, depending on how pregnant you want to be or how pregnant you don't want to be, like there could be two different versions of that. Because, right? like, you know. I'm just saying like, you know, that's, you're gonna have, to, you're gonna need at least like a, a couple of sets of products for that. Like it's not gonna just like work. Like, I mean like if I personally, and I mean I've got a cheese heavy diet, so I mean like I gotta like, you know, I'm rolling the dice on colon cancer. For sure, like, you know, I don't want to get all personal here and talk about my colon too much, but, like, it could have a date pretty soon with cancerous, cancerous entities. But, you know, if I had a colostomy bag that had, like, a minion on it, like, you know, like, go out of opinion, like, you know, go out of public, they'd be like, oh, he shits in a bag, but, oh, look at that cute little jelly bean right there, look at that guy, what a, 
Oh, what a cutie. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait to see it. I already bought my tickets. Oh, man, him just shitting in that bag just made me want to go see the Minions movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I just got a bag shaped like an actual Minion, like a full, full Minion bag. Like, why get a sticker? You know what I mean? Like, it's a colostomy bag. You should spend money on it. Like, you, know, you don't want to have, you know, you don't want to have that many. Like, yeah, shit. I'd have at least seven. One for every day of the week. It'd be pretty great. Um, yeah, but, you know, I see a lot of, uh, you remember, you remember when memes were funny? But they're not really anymore. Like, my mom knows what memes are, so that's it for me. Like, when somebody older than me knows what memes are, it's just like, oh, man, I can't, I can't enjoy this anymore. But everything's kind of like, everything's kind of like a big, drop in a giant shit bucket now, like social networking wise. It's just like you're literally just playing the game of scrolling through Facebook. It's like, oh, how many times am I gonna read this before I just, and my, my, my hands are bleeding because I'm punching my keyboard so hard. I can't argue, oh, it's just so fucking stupid. And um, yeah, it's just, it's not that great of a time, but you know, at least MySpace almost came back. My, you, you, does anybody remember when, the like the MySpace rescue mission happened like probably like two or three years ago. Like, yeah, I know. Oh, come on, you you guys are all here. You've all been on the internet as much as I have. Come on. So you know, a couple of years ago, the there was like a huge MySpace like reconnaissance mission because deep in the fucking bowels of the internet, MySpace had been like a wounded soldier coming down. And they got Justin Timberlake. Like I remember, got a, I got a fucking email from MySpace. It's like, come check out the new MySpace. And I fucking click on the new MySpace, and I just see like a shirtless picture of Justin Timberlake, like sitting there, like with a microphone in his hand. I'm like, go on. Okay. I'm just signing up. I'm signing up. Like this is great. This is great. This is cool. And um, didn't end up panning out. You know, it's like they sent Justin Timberlake in, and he like grabbed MySpace. Like, come on. And MySpace is just like torn to fucking shreds, RoboCop style, just been like beaten by so many bullets, like I can't do it, I can't just leave me here, just leave me here in the bowels of the internet, I can't do it. He's just like, all right, dude, I'm out. But the important thing is that Justin Timberlake and his awesome body made it in fucking tact, like 100%, good to go, rescued, everything is gonna be fine, MySpace, not so lucky. So now we have Facebook, you know, everybody, you know, everybody's got a fucking Facebook. Yeah, I'm gonna make some social networking jokes. Oh man, you guys can relate to that, right? Oh yeah, social networking jokes, that's great, yeah. But I got something, I got something, I got a theory. And I'm usually reaching when I talk about anything, I'm always reaching, but I'm reaching really far on this one. But I still kinda wanna propose it, cause you know, like something eventually will take Facebook down. Everything goes down eventually, and there will be no purpose for it still. So I think what's gonna take Facebook down is the unintentional thumb. Everybody's got, you know, Messenger, everybody's accidentally sent the thumb. I don't think I've ever sent the thumb on purpose, but everybody's accidentally sent it once or twice. So I think what's probably most likely gonna happen it's gonna be like, you know, two 20 something year old fucking kids and one of them's just gonna fucking just lose it because, you know, they took King of the Hill off Netflix and God damn it, I'm still really pissed about that myself. So, you know, he's just gonna be like, he's gonna fucking strap a fucking hot dog style array of fucking bombs to his chest and fucking go to a drive down to the closest children's hospital. He's gonna be fucking messaging his roommate. He's gonna get, give me one good fucking reason why I shouldn't just blow myself up and fucking take this whole children's hospital out and myself. Give me one good reason. The dude's gonna be like, oh shit, like I really need to fucking, I really need to let this guy know what's up, but he's accidentally gonna fucking hit the thumb while he's fucking typing his reply. He's gonna be like, Boo! down the street, just fucking done. So like in hospital and ashes, just cause this dude fucking hit the thumb accidentally and that dude so figured he's just like, oh, fuck it, like yeah. So it seems like it's time to go. It's okay though, all those kids in the hospital were terminally ill, so technically it was a mercy killing and everything is A-okay. 
Yeah, I know. I reach, I reach for the laughs on that one. Don't feel like a bad person if you laughed at that. It's funny. I feel bad when I tell the joke too, but it just, oh, man, being, being social, it's kind of made it a little bit hard. Between like, you know, Facebook and like doing the amount of drugs that I've done, like it's, it's kind of makes it hard to be like social at times. But I don't want to like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, you should do drugs. That's a really good idea. But I literally can't finish forming that sentence without lying. So, I mean, just don't, don't do like the hard shit. But, you know, if you want to go on vacation and you don't have a lot of money, you can buy acid. You can buy like two or three hits of acid and you can take that and you can go wherever you want. Wherever. It doesn't matter. You take three hits of acid and you look at a fucking picture book of Hawaii and you will be in Hawaii. It's fucking great. Like, I don't know if you, you guys see my arm right here. Let me just like, let me just zoom in on this. This right here. I, I didn't know if this was a spider bite or, you know, like an ingrown hair. The doctor told me it doesn't matter. So that was good. Yeah. That's healthcare. In our country. Hey, hey, what is this? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, venom in my hand, the fucking ingrown hair. It's all the same. Yes. We're just splitting hairs, right? Yeah, I hope it doesn't turn to chronic. Oh, yeah, they don't know if it's a spider bite. But he said it didn't matter, so I'm just kind of, kind of let it ride for a while. And, um, you know, being the responsible person that I am, I was like, well, damn, my hand really hurts and I don't have to go to work today, so what am I gonna do? I was like, I'll take some acid and I'll just kinda like think this over for a little bit. It worked pretty well, cause I forgot that I like had a hand, let alone had like a wound on it. I was just kinda sitting there like, oh yeah. And then I went to uh, I went to a fucking show and I fucking started asking all of my friends. I was like, I was just like, hey, like, Put you, you flash your light on this. What is this shit? Like, I was just like letting them explain it to me and shit. Like, you think it's a spider bite? Like, what the fuck's going on here? Because I, I just figured, you know, like, I've WebMD'd myself like a lot. I feel like I have like, you know, probably a good dozen or so forms of cancer and maybe some like, you know, WebMD has like taught me a lot of things about myself and they're all bad. <laughs> Usually you never really like you never really go on that shit unless you're like looking for something that's wrong with you and you're just sitting there. It's like, oh man, my, my thumb kind of hurts. Oh, do I have colon cancer? What is what's happening? And so let me like, look a little deeper in here. But you know, I was sitting there. I was like, yeah, hey, what's going on here? And I was like, my friend was like, oh, maybe it's a spider bite. He's like, if it turns necrotic, you'll know. And I'm like, oh, oh that's reassuring. <laughs> cool. yeah, yeah. It turns black if I wake up one day and like one of my fingers is missing. Like. I'll know that I really fucked up. <laughs> and, um, you know, then I, then I had a friend talking to me about, like, like staff and MRSA and shit, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm, so, I'm just too high for this. I just, like, I just don't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, should, should I cut my arm off? Like, just like, what, 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 what should I do? Oh, I hope I don't have MRSA. Like, fuck. Um... Yeah, acid will do that to you. It'll make you overthink a lot of things. It'll make you forget things, like how to use money. I remember one time I took some acid and I went to a, a 7-Eleven with my friend and I'm fucking sitting there and I'm like looking at like the Gatorade fucking, just like the Gatorade in the cooler and I'm just sitting there and I'm just like. My fucking pal's like, yo, dude, like, are you gonna get a Gatorade or something? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go in the fucking, like, the 13-foot, like, fucking Arctic cave to get a goddamn Gatorade. Like, I'm not wearing a jacket. Like, fuck you, dude. You go in there and get me something. What are you talking about? It's just, like, fucking hands in the air. I was like, ooh, who are you? How did you get... Oh, damn. It seems so far away, though. I just don't understand. I just don't get it. So roll up in that piece, they're like, oh, that's going to be 213. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> totally forgot how fucking money works. <laughs> just forgot about money. Just forgot that it existed. It's like, oh, yeah, just like fucking throw a bunch of like bills on the table. You know, somebody, if like if you work in the service industry, you think somebody's an asshole, if they like throw bills on the table, they might just be really high. They might not, like, it's not that, they, they might not be an asshole, it might just be that they're really fucked up on something and they forgot how everything works. 
service industries fun. I know there's like a lot of like you know there's a lot of religion religion debates popping off in the service industry now about religious freedom and stuff. Um, I think that's I think that's pretty pretty interesting. I don't know. I I think that you know there's in I can't remember exactly where it was, but somebody said that you know an EMT should be able to like refuse service to somebody if they like don't re re like re like approve of their lifestyle and stuff. And I'm like, well, that seems kind of like murder. I don't know. It seems like a little <laughs> seems like a little much. But like you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe. But I'm just like wondering, like you know, what kind of EMT is like this like lifestyle like Superman where they can fucking like come to somebody's house who's having like a heart attack or something yes. and like automatically like figure out exactly. It's like, oh, I see a Sports Illustrated and there's a shirtless guy there and like, this guy seems like he might be gay and I don't know what to think about that, but uh, I mean like, I don't know, there could be like, you know, like a chick in a bikini in there too. Like maybe he just like saw a couple of good pictures on the inside, I don't really know. Meanwhile, it's like, Doo! fucking prison's flatline because the guy's not doing his fucking job. It's like, you know, if I worked at, like, a Starbucks or something, I would, like, love to, like, refuse service to somebody because they don't agree with my satanic principles in a satanic church. Like, that would be fucking raw as shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just be like, oh, you've never heard of the first Mayhem album? Oh, uh, I just forgot your drink order. I'm sorry. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah. You're not. I can't. I'm sorry. I just can't do that. You're just way too, way too into fucking Jesus for me. I just can't. Just can't do it. And honestly, I don't know. I think if I could do it all over again, I'd just live my life by fortune cookies. Because you've never really gotten anything negative thrown at you through a fortune cookie, like me personally. It's always after you've like, you usually feel really bad. Like, I mean, me personally, fortune cookies I get from a China buffet. So like, you know, after I've gone those rounds, it's just like, oh man, I feel really bad. And the fortune cookie just lifts my spirits. But you know, you can imagine like the kind of motherfucker who's just been like living by those like, oh, wealth will see you very soon. Like you will fall into great things. It's just like, you know, I've never had like a negative fortune cookie. I assume if there was one, it would just be like, maybe skip out on the fourth plate of General Sal's chicken. Because the general is about to unleash a wave of bowel cancer on your ass. So maybe just skip that last one. But you know, I mean, fortune cookies, Jesus, it's all like the same drop in the bucket for me. Like it's all like the same like, you know, and I don't mean any offense to anybody who like believes in any of that stuff, but it's just like, you know, like I've seen fortune cookies. Like I have opened them and I have read them and those, like those are facts. Like those are physically presented to me. Jesus, mm, not so much. I haven't seen him around. If Jesus read me a fortune cookie, then I would be way, way fucking in to like, you know, maybe like figuring it out. <laughs> figuring it figuring it all out. Because that's why we're all here, right? Right? Oh man, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm just, I'm just not sure. I'm just not, not sure. So, you know, I got this thing where I go to parties and I'm not really the most sociable person, if you can't tell by like the awkward sweats that are like happening right now. Me talking to people that I'm mostly friends with, like mostly know everybody here, but I'm still just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> but yeah, so I have this thing at parties where I just, you know, I'll, I'll go and I have this thing, it's called, it's called peak of embarrassment. And, um, you know, because you get worried about, like, you know, you talk to somebody at a party, you're going to sound stupid or something. Well, I got the cure for that. Just listen, listen up, because this is important. This is important. All right, you just think about the shittiest, most embarrassing part of your life. Like, the one thing you don't want anybody to know. And then you tell them. You just tell everybody at the party. 
like for me personally, like I personally, like at this point, like I'm 29, so like I've made my runs. Like I have no shame at this point, zero, zero shame meter. So I'll just like drop this right now. About like a decade ago, I drank three quarts of Old English malt liquor. Fantastic drink. I highly recommend. Yeah, I love man. That would that would be such a great sponsorship. That would be a bucket list. Sponsorship. So you know, just think about that. But I drank three quarts of Old English. Man, I feel like after I tell this story, the sponsorship thing is gonna go away. But it's okay. Um, and I walked drunkenly with a bunch of my friends to Cece's. Cece's Pizza. I don't know. You guys didn't remember it? And all you need pizza for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> it's great. But, uh, you know, you, you know how fucking, like, loud and belligerent you have to be to, like, get kicked out of the CCs? Like, <laughs> that was, like, my party of people. They were like, oh, you're, you're too much. It was like, that was, that was definitely a high or a low point, depending on how you want to see it. Like, I don't know, I go back and forth from day to day, but getting kicked out of a CC's was definitely, it was a point in time in my life. So I'm walking back and it was about a good two miles away. And of course, you know, CC's and malt liquor in your stomach, like not, not the best thing for if you want to like keep everything inside of your stomach. So, you know, I personally, you know, I have, I had to take a shit. I had to take a shit, and I was like, well, I was very drunk. And um, I just was like, you know, I'm just gonna go take a shit in the bushes over here, like fucking whatever. And I'll tell you something, I'll tell you something. Shitting in your pants and shitting on your pants aren't the same thing, but generally, for the most part, it's equally as shitty to do that. Um, there's no real cognitive difference between those two things happening. Um, I shit on my pants. And, um, yeah, I had to run through a fucking, uh, my friend's house that was, like, filled with people that I knew. Like, literally, like, two years from now, I remember, I can't remember who exactly I met, but they were like, Oh yeah, my friend Kelly told me that you shit in, on your pants one day and you fucking like ran up the bathroom and were like really embarrassed. So I'm like, oh yeah, that was a great part of my life. Thanks for reminding me. I was really happy until just now when I remembered that. Thanks. But now I, I wear it like a badge of fucking honor because at that point you drop that. You drop that. Like everything you say after that is like a come up. You're like the fucking underdog. It's like, oh, that's the guy who shit his pants. He's actually pretty cool. He can have a conversation with people. Wow, that's fucking great. Ah, oh, holy shit. Man, I thought he was a freak, but man, I guess not. All right, well, shit, guys. That's, that's pretty much all I got. That's pretty much all you boys got. So I really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. I love how everybody's sitting down right now. Everybody's, like, really relaxed and chill and just having just having a great great time i got i got one more i got one more thing yeah one more song <laughs> just like thinking of some songs in my head it's like oh yeah. i could i could sing something but uh, i don't think i'm gonna do that I don't think I want to do that. If I had a lot of money, and you know, that's again really reaching. And, uh, life is soul crushing. I'm trying to. You need to take something from this, and it's that everything is futile. But you should still have fun. You should still have as good of a go as you can have. But just remember that it's all just a drop in the fucking the bucket. <laughs> And the bucket is vast and wide and will swallow you whole. But, but, but if I had a lot of money, I would have a lot of fun because I could have an ironic wine cellar. And I wouldn't have to have like a lot of money for it, but I would have to have enough to like present the wine cellar vibe. And then, you know, I could just fucking, you know, have friends over and be like, and just like step down. 
into my fucking wine cellar and be like, oh, you want some wine? Oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's go down here. Let's check this out. Pull out like a bottle of MD-2020. <laughs> be like, yeah, I think this bottle of MD-2020 was aged. I got this at a gas station off of Fletcher Avenue about two years ago. The uh, dust on the rim <laughs> really showed its age. It's about two years aged, but uh, I've had it for an additional two, so you can really taste the flavors in the bling bling blue raspberry. <laughs> Really, so it's, it's the tip of your tongue. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like some Cisco next. I have some Cisco grape flavored. <laughs> I've aged for ten years. <laughs> You're gonna have to get a really good glass for this one. <laughs> yeah, man, that would be great. It'd be fantastic. You know, it takes just two medium-sized bottles of MD-2020 to make you throw up everywhere for the rest of the night. So just in case you wanted everybody to feel sorry for you, that's your ticket to freedom. All right, thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Fuck me up, dude, fuck me up. Thank you guys so much for coming out. <laughs> Bye.